Hi there, this is Daniel with End Time Country Living, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. So I'm out here doing some screening of some rock finds. Uh, this is basalt uh, rock, generally used for gravel. And at the rock quarry, when they tried to make the half inch nut or one inch nut uh, sizes, they have to screen out a lot of the little fragments in the dust and uh, the only time that they usually would incorporate the dust uh, that gets um, produced by the crushing process is with like three corner mi minus uh, then the dust is kind of incorporated in with that but anything larger than that is usually screened and so they have to get rid of all those screened uh, material uh, all the dust and the little little rocks little tiny ones and so they kind of just pile it up and don't really have a way to get rid of it. Um, so there's a rock quarry fairly close to me that uh, has large piles. I've gotten uh, several other times. I've gone up there and filled my car up with bags of it. Uh, quite a bit of work. It's very heavy. Uh, usually about 120 pounds for a 50 pound bag, feed bag or something like that. And so there, it's a, it's a lot of, lot of heavy lifting and takes a while to get that all done and then it's a long trip there and back and so I thought you know maybe I could just have them bring me a dump truck load since they got their loader they could just you know, get up there and load up the dump truck and bring me a load maybe they can give me a good price on it just for the transportation of it since they don't really are, aren't usually selling the stuff so anyway the guy said yeah we could do it for maybe a couple hundred we'll give you a load it's like yeah well, I think that's reasonable you know they're taking their time out of their day to sell all their stuff and it's valuable to them anyway. So um, I got a 12 yards of fines here and so I thought well you know we'll see how it, how it turns out here. Uh, it's a little little more larger rocks in there than I would like so I'm having to do a little more screening but all those larger rocks can then be used as gravel for my driveway so uh, low-cost way to get gravel, uh, just a little bit of labor to, to get it. And so, super happy to be able to get some of this rock dust. This is, uh, it weathers quite quickly and breaks down, and the biology is able to extract a lot of minerals from it. And so that's kind of what I'm after mainly, is to get the minerals out of there. Uh, import a lot of minerals onto my property, onto my garden beds and my fields, so that uh, the plants can get a lot of good minerals, good variety. Uh, so, and also this uh, enhances the texture of the soil quite significantly. Um, keeps the soil from being so sticky and much more looser. So that the root crops, you know, the potatoes and the sweet potatoes and the carrots, um, any other root crops, even the onions can get in there and get their roots in a little more easily. And so there's a, a double benefit there. So I'm out here doing some screening this morning. I wanted to show you a little bit about what I've been doing. So you can see here a little bit of what the rock pile looks like with the finds. Um, I've had to cover it here with the black plastic because it was going to rain here on Friday. And um, so now it's Sunday here and we got it pulled off a little bit. It got a little wetter than I anticipated. I don't know, it didn't seem to protect it as much as it should be. There must be enough holes in it or something. Um, I got some dry stuff here. It started to dry out over the last week and there's still some dry spots in here. This part was uncovered over here and it's pretty soggy. It's got to be fairly dry in order to screen it so struggling a little bit with that. Uh, just got myself a good flat bottom shovel here using that one. It's working well to scoop it in there, about two scoops. Works fairly well on the wheelbarrow screen here. So this screen here is, I believe, uh, eighth of an inch. And hardware cloth. It's kind of it looks like a woven one, back and forth. Not just one laid on top of the other. So this is on top of my half inch screen that I normally use for compost. So if you haven't seen my uh, compost screener. Uh, it's got a black ABC uh, pipe there that uses as my rubbing 
uh, pipe. It just rubs along the uh, top of the wheelbarrow. So that protects the wheelbarrow from, like a metal pipe would wear on the wheelbarrow quite a bit and probably would wear through that edge. So I don't want that to happen. Uh, a pipe is cheap, wheelbarrows are not. So this is kind of an expendable thing. I've just rotated it this morning. I've got two edges worn down. You see the, the wearing down of this. So this was, I think, my original. This is the last edge. So this side's quite a bit more worn on this side. When I start to see this, I go ahead and rotate it. Rotate it 180 degrees. And so, so this other side is, is also worn down on this. And so I got two more sides, so I just changed it. So now it's gonna be rubbing on a good side here. So this has four, like three inch screws or so going into the wood. So I just drilled some holes all the way through and then put the screws in there and drill, screwed them carefully into the wood there. And they hold fairly nicely that way. So I got reinforced corners here. This is one by fours. They seem to be strong enough and they certainly make it a lot lighter. I wouldn't recommend two by fours. They make it way too heavy. Uh, you're gonna wear yourself out in doing that. And then I have some metal edging, little flange corners pieces that came with some, I'm not sure exactly, maybe some sheet metal roofing or something like that that I got them. They worked really well for protecting that lower edge where you're gonna be grabbing. Otherwise, you get the screen on the bottom uh, down underneath that pokes, is poking out this way. So you. You have to wear gloves and risk tearing up your gloves. Um, so anyway, that's, that is a big help there. And then I just have the little piece of wood there that sticks out over the edge that grabs, uh, allows me to set it on the wheelbarrow. So it kind of rests on those two. So this is kind of the result of the screening. So this is uh, the material that I get out of the screen. So it's kind of medium sized, uh, probably half inch mi minus is about what it is. Some bigger chunks in there. There's another pile that's been kind of washed with the rain a little bit here. So you can kind of see what it, what it looks like. So it's, it's decent, good gravel. And then for the actual screening process, you need some good gloves uh, so you don't wear your hands out obviously. And so you also need something that's tough enough so that you don't wear holes in the fingers. Um, a nice pair of leather gloves will wear the fingers out extremely quickly, quickly on the hardware cloth and whatever material that you're screening also wear on them too. So I found it's just not worth to use the leather gloves. Um, the rubber coated cloth gloves also wear wear out the fingers extremely quickly. So the only, these um, are a nitrile or something like that, uh, 720Rs by Shower Atlas. And these are very nice. These are uh, the best high quality rubber gloves I've ever been able to find. They're nicely coated with a nice cloth lining. So they're very comfortable. Um, they have good fit to them as well. So they fit the hand nicely, or some they're not sloppy in certain areas and too tight in others. There were, at least they fit my hands fairly nicely. Uh, they have a nice texture on this part here. So they're not smooth all the way, but they are smooth back here. So that makes it nice. These are very tough on the fingers. I've never been able to wear out the fingers on these. So they seem to be, they do very well. So I would recommend these if you're looking for a good screening glove. Uh, they can get a little sweaty once you get really going for a while, um, but you can air them out a little bit and air out your hands and go again. All right, so let's grab a little bit here, see what I'm doing. So I'm watching out, trying not to get stuff that's too wet. It kind of came in a little bit wet. All right, so I got two shovelfuls in here. Got to spread it out a little bit here. a good shake there and then I can start working it in through the screen there with my hands. I'm 
shake it again. And that's about it there. So this has the little list stuff there. Let's see what that looks like. And I'll go ahead and get it dumped here. Shake a little bit back on the wheelbarrow. Just like that. And put another couple shovelfuls on there. So underneath here, you can kind of see what the material looks like. And there's a little bit, so this is going to have the most coarse stuff on the, on the surface here, the last stuff that went through the screen. And if you rake down a little bit, it gets a little finer. So this is fairly damp, so it's kind of hard to see the powderiness of it. But when it's dry, it can, there's a lot of very fine powder in there, as well as just a little, little tiny bit of grits. And some of these stuff isn't even as big as it looks. It can be crushed and turn into finer stuff, but it's fairly fine. That's kind of what I want. So something easy for the bacteria and the fungus to get in there and break down into its elemental parts. And so that's kind of the idea here to get something that um, this is also, you know, good texture. So basically a sand texture. Um, fine plus coarse sand. This is, you know, sand has a kind of a one texture to it and one size of the particles, but this has multiple and very, very microscopic, you know, powder particles as well as, you know, sa uh, large sand particles. So this is a, is a very good amendment to the soil as far as texture wise as well as minerals. So let's grab my shovel here and have a bu five gallon bucket out there in the garden. And let's go take it out to the garden here. Okay, got it out here. The bucket over here. All right, fill up the bucket here. It's a little bit too muddy to send the wheelbarrow out in the bed here in the garden, so. Just keep, keeping it on the grass here. I already tried and made a big rut in the thing and it was extremely hard to push, so saving myself some effort and just using the bucket here. It's easier to spread anyway with the bucket. So I already laid some compost down here, so but just kind of shaking it back and forth. Try to get a good covering on here. So this will be mixed in. This won't stay on the surface, but okay, get a little bit more here. These beds over here, I'm gonna be planting the sweet potatoes in, so I've mounded them up. They like a lot of air to the roots, as well as regular Irish potatoes like them mounded up like that. So that's why they're all mounded up. I just kinda of use my big grape hoe to rake up both sides. And then so I'm gonna, this last one's gonna be, what I'm showing you right now with all the rock dust, I'm gonna level it off on the top there so it won't be so pointed and that will incorporate some of the rock dust into the soil. So that's it for this video. As always, I hope you learned something. And if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up on this video, it helps other people to find it, or a comment, or a question, something like that in the comments, that would be great. 
and share this video with your friends if you think it'd be helpful to them. All right, God bless, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.